Okay, and good afternoon. Ready for the class? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you today? Fine, fine. Good, that's nice to hear that. Let's see, we're almost ready. Just let me send a message to the group. ¿En qué turno estaban? ¿Estuvieron de noche o de día? De noche, ahora salimos de pelado. Ah, bueno, entonces a lo mejor sí están dormidos. Pero bueno, vamos a comenzar entonces. Let me start the new share. ¿Estuvo en la clase del sábado, Glenda? Sí, ¿verdad? No, no pude. Okay. 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 Well, the last Saturday we were talking about uh, professions, uh, workplace activities that people do at the workplace. And the last thing that we did was to practice this conversation. Uh, let me share the sound with you so that you can listen to the conversation and then tell me if you have any question about it. Vamos a escucharla y luego me dice si tiene preguntas. Page 11, exercise 7, conversation. I start work at 5. Part A. Listen and practice. So, do you usually come to the gym in the morning? Yeah, I do. I usually come here at 10 o'clock. Really? What time do you go to work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at 5. Wow, that's late. When do you get home at night? I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That is late. What do you do exactly? I'm a chef. I work at the Pink Elephant. That's my favorite restaurant. By the way, I'm Kevin. Okay, Glenda, do you have any question about the vocabulary or pronunciation? Mm, no. No bueno, partial. Solo, solo elephant. Elephant, como se Elephant. Mm. Uh -huh. Pink elephant. Pink elephant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's similar like in Spanish elephant. So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. it's just with a, es como que tiene una pequeña fuerza de voz al principio. Elephant. Okay, uh, Stanley, welcome to the class. Uh, we are practicing this conversation, Stanley. Uh, would you okay. like to practice with Glenda? You can start and Glenda would be Ali. Okay, teacher. Okay, you can start, Stanley. Okay. Um, so, do you usually come to the gym in the morning? Yeah. I do. I usually come here at ten. Really? What time do you go to work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at five. Wow, that's late. When did you get home at night? I usually just come at midnight. Midnight. That is a lie. What do you do exactly? Um, yes, I work as a team elephant. That's my favorite restaurant, by the way, uh, I'm Kevin. Okay, very good. Now change. Glenda, you start now. 
Eh, ahora, al contrario. <laughs> you yes. start. Uh -huh. So, do you usually come to the gym in the morning? Yeah, I do. do I usually come here at mm, 10 o'clock. Really? What time do you go to work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at five. Wow, that's great. When do you get home at night? I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That is late. What do you do exactly? I'm chef. I work at the Pink Elephant. That my favorite restaurant by the the way. Okay. By the way, I'm Kevin. Yes, by the way, I'm Kevin. Very good. Now, let's, uh, you did a very good job with the pronunciation. Just let me uh, see here this word, here. I usually come here. I usually come here. Excellent. I usually come here at 10. At 10. Mm -hmm. Any question about this conversation? You did a very good job with, with it. Just is a matter of practicing, repeating and repeating, so you get fluent. Le hicieron muy bien, solo es que hay que repetir bastante para que se oiga más fluido. Pero lo demás, bien, y solo la palabrita está here. But then, excellent. Here. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, teacher. Questions. Okay, so let's listen to the rest of the conversation in part B. Listen, what time does Kevin get up? And what time does Kevin start work? We're going to listen and get the answer to those two questions, okay? You can uh, write down the answers in your notebooks if you want. And if not, just, um, just gather the information and then we share. This is just listening. Ready? Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay, remember the two question. What time does Kevin get up and what time does he start work? Page 11, exercise 7, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What time does Kevin get up? Start work. And what about you, Kevin? What's your day like? Well, right now I'm in school so I just have a part-time job, but I'm pretty busy. I get up at 6 o'clock on weekdays. I have class from 7 to 9, and then I come here to the gym. I work from 11 to 2, then I have classes in the afternoon. So where do you work? At the Hungry Student Restaurant near the university. I'm a dishwasher. Really? Say, do you want to work at the Pink Elephant? Okay, did you get the information or you want to listen one more time? Is it okay once or you want to listen one more time? Listen one more time and take notes. What time does Kevin get up and what time does he start work? Page 11, exercise 7, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What time does Kevin get up? Start work. And what about you, Kevin? What's your day like? Well, right now I'm in school, so I just have a part-time job. But I'm pretty busy. I get up at 6 o'clock on weekdays. I have class from 7 to 9, and then I come here to the gym. I work from 11 to 2. Then I have classes in the afternoon. So where do you work? At the Hungry Student Restaurant near the university. I'm a dishwasher. Really? Say, 
Do you want to work at the pink elephant? Okay, let's see now. What time does Kevin get out? At six o'clock. Excellent, Glenda. Thank you so much. And what time does he start work? Seven. Nine. Uh, what time does he start work? Eleven. Yes. <laughs> yes, he starts at eleven. Okay, so nice job with the listening. Now we have uh, this uh, pronunciation practice is for syllable stress. Uh, when when we talk about the stress, um, es, se refiere a donde hay una fuerza de voz, o donde nosotros en español le decimos acento, donde donde hay una fuerza de voz. In English, eso se llama stress. Um, listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Uh, you can see here the word dancer. Dancer is two syllables. Dancer. And you see this uh, This ball dancer. is bigger. This, uh -huh. this circle is bigger because that is where you listen and you pronounce it with the stress. Dancer, dancer, dancer. So that, that, that is what this circle means. The big circle is where the syllable which has the stress, okay? As you see here, sales person is three syllables. Sales person, sales person. And the stress is in the first syllable, sales person. And then we have accountant. Accountant has three syllables. Accountant, accountant. And the stress is in the middle. So let's listen and you can repeat at, at home. Pueden repetir en casa. Recuerden siempre con los micrófonos en, en off por eh, cuestión de que tenemos diferente velocidad de internet. Entonces se va a oír como, como eh, un desorden. Pero luego lo vamos a practicar individualmente. So, ready for listening? Vamos a repetir en casa después. Listen and then repeat. Page 11, exercise 8. Pronunciation. Syllable stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Dancer. Salesperson. Accountant. Let's repeat one more time. Page 11, exercise 8. Pronunciation. Syllable stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Dancer. Salesperson. Accountant. Okay, volunteer to practice. Who wants to read that first word? Can you repeat? Dancer. Dancer. Excellent. Next word, salesperson. Volunteer? Salesperson. Very good, Pedro. And the last word? Salesperson. Uh huh. Very good. And the last? Accountant. Excellent. Accountant. Okay. Now to complete the exercise Accountant. in part B. Excellent. Thank you. Now to complete part B. Which stress pattern do these words have? And then do the columns in part A, then listen and check. So we have, let's see, six words. Tenemos seis palabras. En el ejercicio B, lo que vamos a ir haciendo es escribir. Recuerden que vamos a dividir por sílabas las palabras eh, por pronunciación, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, dancer tiene dos sílabas. Dancer, dancer. Y el estrés está en la primera sílaba. Entonces, eh, vamos a ver 
Carpenter. ¿Cuántas sílabas tiene Carpenter? Three syllables. Uh -huh. Caregiver. Two. Okay. Musician. Musician. How many syllables does he have? Musician. Three. Excellent. Musician. 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 Okay. And then, uh, vamos a ir escuchando y van a escribir debajo de qué columna corresponden. Si es de dos sílabas y tiene el estrés en la primera sílaba, la van a escribir aquí, debajo de dancer. Si tienes tres sílabas y el estrés o la fuerza de voz está en la primera, lo van a escribir debajo de salesperson. Si es de tres sílabas con estrés en la sílaba de en medio, lo van a escribir debajo de accountant. Van a escribir dos debajo de cada categoría, decirlo así. Si no tienen el material impreso, no se preocupen, lo pueden escribir en su cuaderno. Les voy a dar tiempo para que escriban en el cuaderno. Pueden hacer el dibujito nada más de los círculos para que vayan clasificando sus palabras. Y recuerden que si lo tienen en, su, um, en el PDF, lo pueden ir modificando también. Eh, en la computadora. Como les salga más fácil, más conveniente. Okay, I'm going to play the recording. Remember, we have to write this word. Tienen que ir escribiendo estas palabras. Carpenter, caregiver, musician, reporter, server, tutor. Debajo de cada categoría según el estrés y la cantidad de sílabas. Let's listen. Page 11, exercise 8, part B. Which stress pattern do these words have? Add them to the columns in part A, then listen and check. Carpenter. Caregiver. Musician. Reporter. Server. Tutor. Let's listen one more time. Page 11, exercise 8, part B. Which stress pattern do these words have? Add them to the columns in part A, then listen and check. Carpenter. Caregiver. <laughs> Musician. Mm -hmm. 
Reporter. Server. Tutor. Were you able to complete it or you want to listen one more time? Yeah. Okay. Page 11, exercise eight, part B. Which stress pattern do these words have? Add them to the columns in part A, then listen and check. Carpenter. Caregiver. Musician. Reporter. Server. Tutor. Okay, let's check your answers. Okay, this is what you should have. And their dancer, you should have server and tutor. Then in the second column, you should have status person, which is already here. Then Carpenter and then caregiver. And under the last column, you should have a content, which is already here musician and reporter. Are your answers correct? Did you have all them correct? Yes, yes. Perfect. Very well done. Okay, uh, that was just a listening and pronunciation practice. And then we have, um, I don't know if I click on new share. Let me get back to the material. Okay, we have these um, exercises for the prepositions of time. This is the handout that I sent the last um, Saturday. I sent it and we have this material here in which we are going to practice the prepositions of time. Um, algunas veces es como confuso decir cuando voy a usar at, cuando voy a usar in, y cuando voy a usar on. Entonces, uh, vamos a hacer esta práctica porque pues lo que sigue se, en, el, en el material que descargamos son ejercicios precisamente que nos eh, incluyen preposiciones de tiempo. Cuando usamos at, at lo vamos a usar con el periodo de tiempo para referirnos noche, at night, at night. Ok, so si usted quiere decir yo veo televisión por la noche, entonces debemos decir I watch TV at night. No se dice in the night. So, para ese periodo de tiempo, para, ese, para esa partecita del día, se dice at, at night. Recuerden el ejemplo, I watch TV at night. 
Eh, otra eh, forma, en otra ocasión de que tenemos que usar at es cuando vamos a mencionar a qué hora sucede algún evento. No es cuando estamos dando la hora, cuando estamos diciendo qué hora es. No, es algo totalmente diferente. Es cuando vamos a decir, por ejemplo, decir, eh, yo empiezo a trabajar a las 7 de la mañana. I start work at 7. Ok. Esa es a la hora que empieza mi horario. No es que estoy dando qué hora es en ese momento, no. Si digo, ¿a qué hora tengo la clase? I have a class at 3. Okay, I have class at 3. And then uh, also with noon. Ok, podemos decir noon. ¿Sabemos qué significa noon? Noon. Uh, por ahí escuché. Más o menos, en Media. medio. Medianoche. Uh, uh, no, dice uh, midnight. Uh, la, la, la que está abajo, que es midnight, es medianoche. Ah, ah correcto. No, es mediodía, perdón. Mediodía. Eh, escuchar de repente como midday. Midday o noon se refiere a las 12 del mediodía. Eh, por ejemplo, ah, ok, y aquí tenemos midnight también, que es medianoche. Entonces, con estas periodos, con estas partes del día, como mediodía, medianoche, también se usa at. Por ejemplo, si usted quiere decir, ah, yo tengo mi almuerzo a mediodía, exacto, a las 12 yo almuerzo. That's it. So you say, I have lunch at noon. No decimos in the noon, no podemos decir on noon. No, no es correcto. La forma correcta es utilizarlo con at. At noon, at midnight, at night. At midnight también. A la hora de dormir también. Bed time. A la hora de que nos vamos a dormir. Bed time. So you can say... Um, uh, mi tiempo para leer es antes de dormir o cuando voy ya a la cama. I read at bedtime. Yo leo a la hora de ir a la cama antes de dormirme, right? I, I read at bedtime. Y también con la, cuando el sol sale o cuando el sol se pone, sunrise, sunset. So you can say, yo me tomo café cuando el sol se pone. I have a coffee at sunset. Okay, at sunset. Eh, y por aquí hay algo, pues, que vamos a ver at the weekend, se dice en United Kingdom. Cuando es algo que es a, a la, en los fines de semana, en el Reino Unido se pronuncia, se, se hace como eh, la combinación con at, at the weekend. Por ejemplo, si dice yo visito a mis papás los fines de semana, la gente del Reino Unido van a decir I visit my parents at the weekend, pero vean acá, si es en United States, en Estados Unidos, ellos dicen on the weekend, ok, so dependerá de la región, si es para United Kingdom, ellos dicen at the weekend, y los americanos eh, dicen on the weekend, nosotros practicamos más que todo el americano, entonces, si queremos decir, yo veo a mis papás o yo visito a mis padres los fines de semana, tendríamos que decir, on the weekend. I visit my parents on the weekend. ¿Ok? ¿Cuándo vamos a utilizar in? Con estas partes del día. Es in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Recuerden, no son intercambiables. No podemos decir in the night. Para night tenemos at. También, mediodía, noon, también at, midday, at, midnight, at, etc. No son intercambiables. Remember that. So, in the morning. Si decimos solo tomo café en la mañana, eso es mentira, solo es un ejemplo. I drink coffee only in the morning. In the morning. Remember? I drink coffee only in the morning. Occasionally in the afternoon. <laughs> Always, but anyways. 
And then in the evening, remember, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. También utilizamos in para eh, cuando vamos a mencionar a uh, algún mes del año. Aquí tenemos en ejemplo February. Tenemos el mes de febrero como ejemplo. But you can say I, por ejemplo, si quiere decir yo voy a la playa en agosto. I go to the beach in August. In August, in September, etc. Para mencionar los meses, in y luego el mes. También se utiliza in para eh, referirnos a algo de las estaciones del año. Y el de está en paréntesis porque es opcional. In the spring, o podemos decir in a spring. Remember the meaning of a spring? ¿Qué es spring? Primavera. Primavera, exacto. Primavera, sí. Primavera, muy bien. So, y con las estaciones del año se utiliza in, por ejemplo, ¿qué sucede en primavera? Podemos decir que se ven flores bonitas. You can see many beautiful flowers in spring. Ok. Eh, es muy caliente en verano. It's very hot in the summer. It's very hot in the summer. In the summer. Now, in fall or in autumn, esos dos significan lo mismo. Fall and autumn es el otoño. Las dos significan otoño. Fall and autumn. Eh, y luego tenemos winter, que es pues el invierno. Podemos decir que llueve mucho en el invierno. It rains a lot in winter. So recuerden, vamos a usar in con estos periodos del día, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, para mencionar meses y para las estaciones del año, vamos a mencionarlas con in. También cuando vamos a mencionar años, por ejemplo, in 2013, tenemos aquí el ejemplo, in 2013, eh, es decir, empecé a estudiar inglés en el 2019. I started to study English in 2019, for example. Entonces, para mencionar años, in. Y, y pues el año. Eh, o también para mencionar décadas. In the 90s, por ejemplo, en los 90s. In the 90s. Eh, y luego con esta expresión que para decirle a alguien en unos cuantos minutos o en unos pocos minutos. In a few minutes. Okay. So you can say, vamos a hacer unos ejercicios en unos minutos. We're going to do some exercise in a few minutes. In a few minutes. And finally, we have on. Finalmente tenemos on. Okay. On se utiliza para mencionar días específicos. Aquí tenemos como ejemplo Sunday. Como decir... Um, yo que uh, yo voy al supermercado los domingos o el domingo. I go to the supermarket on Sunday. On Sunday. Lunes los lunes. I have meeting on Monday. Eh, es decir, hay eh, hay que más um, I see my sister or I visit my sister on Thursdays. Entonces, siempre que se va a mencionar algo que se hace en un día específico, antes de mencionar el día, utilizamos on. On Monday, on Sunday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, etc. Y también podemos hacer frases como mencionar el día y el, el, la, la parte del día, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, decir... Eh, tengo meeting los lunes por la mañana. I have meeting on Monday morning. Okay. Tenemos clases viernes por la tarde. We have classes on Friday afternoon. And also Saturday afternoon. 
Y ahí pues vemos, puede ser con morning, afternoon, and evening, etc. También cuando vamos a mencionar ciertos eh, días que son festivos, como decir, on my birthday, on a holiday, on Christmas day, on May 5th, etc. For holidays, para festivos, on. Eh, también como decir un día de semana, on a weekday. Y la expresión decir a tiempo, on time. Eh, decir, yo siempre estoy a tiempo para mi clase. I am always on time for my class. Para armar la expresión a tiempo es on, on time. And then on, también como ya habíamos mencionado, si es en el área de, de eh, o inglés americano o vamos a referirnos a, a, en esas áreas, so we say on the weekend. And I know this is a lot of information, uh, es bastante información y con esto lo único que se puede hacer es práctica. Uh, aprendernos este cartelito como que tomaría bastante tiempo, pueden mejor hacer como oraciones utilizando at, in, on. Y acá tenemos un ejercicio que es fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks below with the correct preposition of time. Tomando en cuenta lo que tenemos acá, podemos ir completando las oraciones que tenemos acá. Por ejemplo, number one, it's done as an example. My brother has a new job. He works in the evening. So decíamos que para la tarde se usa in. In the evening. Luego tenemos eh, más ejercicios acá. Ok. En el número dos, por ejemplo, a ver si se recuerdan. We're going to have a picnic. And tenemos la expresión Saturday afternoon. Oh, um. Um. Y nos dice um. cuando vamos a mencionar el día y es eh, la parte del día es on. Entonces aquí, si ustedes están trabajando en la computadora, este es el que les mandé el sábado pasado, solamente tienen que darle aquí en texto la T y luego digitan ahí. On. Ahí está su respuesta. On Saturday afternoon. Y si no, si no lo tienen en la computadora, están trabajando en su cuaderno porque tampoco lo han impreso, no es necesario que escriban toda la oración. Eh, pueden nada más escribir number one, in, number two, on, number three, y así irlas completando. Y luego pues vamos a eh, tener tiempo para revisar nuestras respuestas. Voy a dar tiempo para que trabajen en esto. Y luego me dejan saber cuando ya hayan finalizado. Es ir escribiendo in, on, at. Recuerden que esto lo tienen en, su, en el WhatsApp. Se los mandé el sábado pasado. Y pueden ir revisando y completando acá. Ok.
finish. Okay, Guillermo, what do you have in number three? Number three, on. On an hour? Uh, yes. Okay, correct answer, in. In, ah, okay. Uh, remember that is an expression, in? Tenía, es, en ese es donde he tenido más dudas. Otro sí, pues no seguro. Sorry? En ese es donde tenía más dudas, le digo, en el, en el, en el number three. En, en el tercero. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok, so what is the, uh -huh. what is the question? Tenía duda eh, porque, es, ¿qué, ¿qué le iba a poner? Si le iba a poner at, in o om. Pero es in. Ah, ajá, lo que estábamos diciendo que son como expresiones armadas. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you can say in an hour, in a few minutes, etc. Uh -huh. But, uh -huh. Good, thank you. Do you have the number four? At. At, at excellent. At. Uh -huh. And number five? At. at very good at number six in on uh, in on this is a question here january 14 mm -hmm. algunos dijeron in otros dijeron on y aquí tenemos el january 14 Recuerden que el in es cuando vamos a mencionar nada más el mes. Pero si sí, vamos a mencionar como una fecha, como mi cumpleaños, el holiday, Christmas day, eh, acompañado del eh, usualmente mes y día, es on. Mm, on, ah, ok, ok. Sí, es yes, on January 14. Si fuera solo el mes, in. That's ok. Pero ya es el mm -hmm. mes y fecha, on. Now, my grandfather was born, y tenemos. Mm. Ajá, porque estamos mencionando décadas. In the 50s. In, mm -hmm. In the 50s. Uh, we'll be. At time. On time. On time. Um. Ajá, la expresión on a tiempo se arma con on. On time. Uh-huh. And then number nine? In. In, con las uh -huh, estaciones del tiempo o, o del año. In winter. Excellent. In winter. Yes. Are there any holidays? In. In, uh -huh. in October, porque solo menciona el mes, no hay fecha. So in October. Great. Um, our school cafeteria opens for lunch at noon. At, at noon. At noon. Excellent. At, at noon. noon. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, what time does your son go to bed? At night. At night. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, 13. We move to this city. In. In. 2012. Very good. Are you going to do anything special? Your birthday? On your birthday. Excellent. Your On your birthday? I'm not going to watch that TV show. It starts at, at midnight. At midnight. Perfect. This is not really difficult, right? <laughs> it's just practice y así como hicieron con estas oraciones eh, solo pues algún par de dudas pero los demás muy bien en las respuestas que me dieron estaban en su gran mayoría correctas eh, so nomás es practicar para ir eh, ok armando como mecanizando memorizándolas sin estar sentados aprendiéndonos el cartelito este verdad 
Y luego, pues, en el material teníamos las time expressions y aquí es donde vamos a ver que aquí están las preposiciones, pero, pues, eh, les puse este material porque aquí como que está más, más ordenado, más explicadito cómo. Y aquí, pues, ya vamos de una vez a la práctica. Vamos a cambiar para escuchar el audio del Grammar Focus. Ok. Time expressions. Y aquí pues va lo que estábamos viendo anteriormente. So vamos a poner el audio solo para el listening. Y pues pueden igual repetir en casa después de la, del recording. Si quieren practicar pronunciación de lo que ven ahí en pantalla. That's fine. Ok, ya estoy compartiendo sonido. So let's listen. Page 12, Exercise 9, Grammar Focus, Time Expressions. I get up at 6 in the morning on weekdays. I go to bed around 10 in the evening on weeknights. I leave work early in the afternoon on weekends. I get home late at night on Fridays. I stay up until midnight on Saturdays. I exercise before noon on Sundays. I wake up after noon on Sundays. Expressing clock time. Six. Six. Six o'clock. Six a.m. equals six in the morning. Six p.m. equals six in the evening. Okay, so there we have the time expressions using the prepositions of time. Eh, tenemos las eh, expresiones de tiempo en las cuales están utilizando las preposiciones in, at y on, que ya, es, ya vimos cómo, pues, en qué momento se, uta, se utiliza cada una. Y algunas expresiones como early, late, esto es pues eh, early, meaning temprano, late started. Until es hasta donde finaliza un periodo, ¿verdad? I stay up late until midnight. Estoy diciendo que estoy de pie, estoy levantada hasta la medianoche. And then we have before, you know, before es antes y after, después. Para expresar el tiempo por, eh, de la, la hora, podemos decir nada más six. Pues si es en punto, utilizamos la expresión o'clock. Si nos referimos a la mañana, podemos mencionar a.m. and p.m. para la tarde. Based on this uh, grammar focus, we have to complete the exercise A, circle the correct words. Vamos a encerrar en un círculo la expresión correcta. Y recuerden que si no lo tienen impreso, lo pueden hacer en su cuaderno y no es necesario que escriban toda la oración, solamente la respuesta. Por ejemplo, number one sería at, one at, I get up at six on weekdays. Number two, it says I have lunch y tenemos la hora acá, 11.30, tenemos at y early. What do you think?
ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ I have lunch at. Aha, uh -huh. I have lunch at. Uh, eleven. Eleven thirty. Um. On Monday. Yes. yes. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much, Glenda. That is correct. I have lunch at. 11.30 on Mondays. Very good. Uh, volunteer for number three, please. Number three. Me. Thank you, Pedro. I have a little snack around 10 at night. Excellent. That's correct. Thank you so much, Pedro. I have a little snack at around 10 at night. Very good. Uh, volunteer for number four. Number four, who has number four? On Friday, I will call you. On Friday, I leave school early. Oh. Excellent. That is correct. See your answer. On Fridays, I leave school early. Excellent job. Now let's see. Volunteer for number five. Uh, I stay up until 1 a.m. on weekends. Excellent. That is correct. Until and on. Excellent. Thank you so much, Pedro. And number six. Uh, I sleep until noon on Sundays. Excellent. That's correct. Thank you so much. So um, now in part B, we have to rewrite the sentences in part A, which is this that we have already done. But the sentences uh, should be true for us. So, es la misma tipo de oraciones, pero eh, acerca de nosotros. Por ejemplo, la uno aquí dice, I get up at six on weekdays. What about you? I do not get up at six, for example. I get up at four on weekdays. I get up at 4 a.m. on weekdays. Ya tienen que volverlas a escribir, pero con acerca de ustedes. ¿verdad? ¿A qué hora se levantan, por ejemplo, los weekdays? Eh, sé que es diferente, ¿verdad? Dependiendo del turno que estén, pero ajá, tienen que escoger uno. I'll give you time and then you will share your sentences.
en la número 4 le podemos cambiar donde dice school por work o así la dejamos sí pueden cambiarla sí.
Have you finished? Mm -hmm. Would you like to share your sentences, Glenda? No. La primera. Okay. I get up at 10 p.m. on weekend, weekday. Okay. That's good. Number two. I have lunch at 1 p.m. on every day. Mm -hmm. On weekdays? Um, and all the day, every day. Mm -hmm. And all the day. <laughs> every day, okay. Number three. I have a little snack around night at night. Around now? Uh, around nine. Nine at night. At night, okay. Number four. On Friday, I leave for early. Mm -hmm. I stay up until uh, 12 p.m. on weekend. Yeah. I sleep until noon on Saturday. Excellent. Very well done, Glenda. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Anybody else? Pedro, Guillermo, Sunny. One number five. Six. Yeah, the six of them. If you have the six, it's okay. You can share all of them. If you only have one, two, or three, that's fine. Um. Uh, oh, todo. Yeah, all of them. Si las tiene todas, todas. <laughs> well, uh, I get up at five a.m. on weekday. Number two, I have a lunch at 1 p.m. on Thursday. And I have a little snack around night at night. On Friday, I leave my work early um six five pardon, five I stay up I stay up until eleven p.m. on weekends. Number six, I sleep until until at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Great, excellent, Pedro. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else? Okay, so que my. Okay, Guillermo. Um, number one, I I get up at seven. During the weekend. Okay. Number two. Number two. I launch at noon on Mondays. On Monday? Uh huh. Number three. I have a smart Nike a treat in the afternoon. Okay. Number four, I finish my class airing on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Number five, I stay up early 11 on weekend. On weekend? Uh-huh. Uh -huh, weekend. Uh, number six, uh, I sleep until... Mm -hmm. Night on Sunday. On Sunday. Okay, on Sunday. very well done. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Stanley, would you like to share your sentences? And 
Ok, creo que ya se desconectó, Stanley. Ok, it's, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Now, we have some questions here. Uh, I think that um, it's going to skip that part because we have the listening in daily schedules. So okay. we're going to complete this chart. Vamos a co completar este cartelito. Okay, um, remember if you have this printed, si lo tienen impreso, lo pueden hacer ahí eh, en su material. Y si no, eh, le voy a dar tiempo para que lo escriban en su cuaderno, like daily schedules. Eh, tenemos los tres nombres, Greg, Megan, and Lori. Pueden escribir nada más los tres nombres. Y luego, job, gets up at, gets home at, and goes to bed at. Voy a dar tiempo para que escriban en el cuaderno y luego vamos a escuchar y a completar la información que hace falta. Ready? Ready. Okay, so we're going to listen and we have to complete. Complete this chart. Some, uh, well, for Greg, job is already here. He is a mechanic. And then we have to complete what time does he get up, get home, and goes to bed. And then for Megan, yes, and Lori, so their job, their job, and then the missing information here. I'm going to play the recording twice. And in case that you need to listen one more time, I'm going to play three times. Let me yeah, yeah, okay. Page 12, exercise 10, listening. Daily schedules. Part A. Listen to Greg, Megan, and Lori talk about their daily schedules. Complete the chart. What do you do, Greg? I'm a mechanic. Oh, yeah? So, what are your work hours like? They're okay. I work in the mornings and afternoons. I get up around 6 a.m., and I work from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. I get home pretty early, about 4 p.m. I go to bed at 10. And what do you do, Megan? Well, I'm a receptionist. It's a regular 9 to 5 office job, so I get up at 7 a.m. and get home around 6 p.m. That's okay, though, because I like to go out at night. I go to bed around midnight on weekdays. What about you, Lori? Well, my hours are a bit different. I'm a nurse. I start work at 11 o'clock at night. I work until 7 a.m. Wow. So what time do you get up? I get home at 8 and go to bed at about 8.30, and I sleep until 4 p.m. And what do you do in the evenings? Oh, you know, I have dinner, watch TV, see friends. It's a great schedule for me. Page 12, Exercise 10, Listening, Daily Schedules, Part A. Listen to Greg, Megan, and Lori talk about their daily schedules. Complete the chart. What do you do, Greg? I'm a mechanic. Oh, yeah? So, what are your work hours like? They're okay. I work in the mornings and afternoons. I get up around 6 a.m., and I work from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. I get home pretty early, about 4 p.m. I go to bed at 10. 
And what do you do, Megan? Well, I'm a receptionist. It's a regular 9 to 5 office job. So I get up at 7 a.m. and get home around 6 p.m. That's okay, though, because I like to go out at night. I go to bed around midnight on weekdays. What about you, Lori? Well, my hours are a bit different. I'm a nurse. I start work at 11 o'clock at night. I work until 7 a.m. Wow. So what time do you get up? I get home at 8 and go to bed at about 8.30, and I sleep until 4 p.m. And what do you do in the evenings? Oh, you know. I have dinner, watch TV, see friends. It's a great schedule for me. Did you gather all the information or you would like to listen one more time? One more time, okay? Okay. Page 12, Exercise 10, Listening, Daily Schedules, Part A. Listen to Greg, Megan, and Lori talk about their daily schedules. Complete the chart. What do you do, Greg? I'm a mechanic. Oh, yeah? So, what are your work hours like? They're okay. I work in the mornings and afternoons. I get up around 6 a.m., and I work from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. I get home pretty early, about 4 p.m. I go to bed at 10. And what do you do, Megan? Well, I'm a receptionist. It's a regular 9 to 5 office job. So I get up at 7 a.m. and get home around 6 p.m. That's okay, though, because I like to go out at night. I go to bed around midnight on weekdays. What about you, Lori? Well, my hours are a bit different. I'm a nurse. I start work at 11 o'clock at night. I work until 7 a.m. Wow. So what time do you get up? I get home at 8 and go to bed at about 8.30, and I sleep until 4 p.m. And what do you do in the evenings? Oh, you know. I have dinner, watch TV, see friends. It's a great schedule for me. Okay, uh, what do you have for Greg? Okay, Greg is a mechanic. What else do you have? Six, I am. Get home at? Six. Get food at six, I am. And what time does he go to bed? What do you have? Ten. Okay. What about Megan, a volunteer? Reception. Reception is? Okay. And she gets up at 7 a.m. and gets home at? 6 At 6 p.m. And goes to bed at? Midnight on the day. Midnight and weekdays, or what about Lori? What's her occupation? Nurse. A nurse? nurse, okay. A nurse, good. What time does she get up? Eleven. Okay, and get some at? Okay, eight. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to check, and goes to bed at? Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> the answers. You can see here, Greg is a mechanic. He gets up at 6 a.m. and gets home at 4 p.m. Goes to bed at 10 p.m. Megan is a receptionist. That's correct. Gets up at 7 a.m. Gets home at 6 p.m. And goes to bed at midnight. 
And about Lori, yes, she's a nurse, as you say that. Uh, she gets up at 4 p.m., gets home at 8 a.m., and goes to bed at 8.30 a.m. Oh, very good. Very good. I think that most of your answers were correct. So that's good. I think that listening is one of the most difficult skills to develop. But you're doing it great. And to complete the section number two, we have this reading, uh, this reading comprehension exercise. Okay, really, why do you need a job? So we have uh, the profiles as who's in high school, who's in college, who's a new parent. These people need job. Read about their schedules, experience, and why they need a job. Uh, volunteer to read about Julia Brown. I volunteer to read about Julia. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Glenda. And Pedro, about Eddie. Let's start, Glenda. I, I study, study French. Mm -hmm. I want to be a teacher someday. I have class all day on Monday. Thursday and Thursday and on Wednesday, Wednesday and Friday afternoon. I usually study on weekend. I need a job because college is really expensive. I don't have any friends, but I'm a fast learner. Okay, experience. I don't have any experience, but I'm a fast learner. Thank you so much, Linda. Okay. Any questions? Tenemos preguntas, vocabulario, pronunciación. No questions? No. Okay, thank you so much for confirming. Now, Pedro, can you read about any chan? Uh, I'm 16 now. I My parents don't give me an IOS anymore, and I want to earn some money because I like to go out with my friends on the weekend. I go to a school at eight and I got I get home around four thirty. My parents own a rest restaurant restaurant so I know a little about restaurant work. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for reading Pedro. Any question about vocabulary or pronunciation? Allowance. Allowance is, uh -huh. es la mesada. O, bueno, nosotros no le llamamos, creo, de ninguna forma en específica, pero en inglés se le conoce allowance como a la cantidad de dinero que usted destina para sus hijos, ya sea mensual o que se le dé semanal, o etcétera. Por ejemplo, decir darles un dólar diario para que vayan a la escuela, pero usted ya tiene ese como ese gastito ya presupuestado, ¿verdad? Usted dice si le da un dólar diario o le da los cinco dólares para la semana para que vaya al colegio. A eso se le llama allowance. Ok. Any other question? La palabra restaurant, eh, me cuesta pronunciarla, siempre no se puede. Resto, es como restaurant, 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 excellent, restaurant. Yo creo que sí sabe, pero porque la primera vez sí no, no, luego usted se corrigió usted mismo y lo dijo bien. So, es solo cuestión ah. de, yeah, you know, it's restaurant. Muy bien. Sí, a uh, volunteer to read about Denise Parker. Who wants to read about Denise Parker? Mm 
Guillermo. Uh, uh, me. Okay, thank uh, you. My husband is an accountant and marking good ma money, but we do we seven don't? very don't seven very much. Well, uh, we live in a, a smart apartment and we have a new baby. Uh, what, what, what one do seven money? We want, uh, we want, we want, we want do seven money. Save. Do save, 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 save money, money, and uh, to put a house, house. To buy a uh, house. To buy a house, I tack, I tack care of the baby. Take. So, take. Uh, I take care of the baby. So I knew I got, I got a I need job. a job. Uh -huh. I need a job. I can't do at home. At home. At home. I can't take web, web and have a new computer. 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 Uh -huh. Computer. Good. Thank you so much. Remember that the eh, letter E, la vocal E, por ejemplo, aquí live, no se pronuncia live, tampoco en have, live, have, save. Live, have, save, care, type, Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for reading. Now about this reading, we have this exercise. And um, if it is necessary, you can read again the article and check why do these people need a job and check the correct boxes. To save money. Who needs a job to save money? to pay for college, to go out on the weekend, and to buy a house. I didn't get a cat. Según la lectura, ¿quién necesita eh, un trabajo number one to save money? Si es Julia, Denise, or Eddie, hay chequean. Eh, to pay for college, to go out on the weekend, and to buy a house. Pone la, la lectura.
Okay, who needs a job to save money? What do you have? Edit. And well, Denise, uh -huh. and to pay for college? No, Edit, check, Edit, change. All right, and the correct answer here is Dennis for number one is Dennis. Number two, to pay for college. Eddie. 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 Uh, Julia. To go out on the weekend. There's Eddie's. Mm -hmm. Eddie, and to buy a house? No sé de quién es la última lectura. Es que no vimos la lectura, por eso no, yo no puedo contestar. Sí, puede ver un poquito, bajar un poquito la pantalla. Ok, ya. Uh, Here it is. Ah, uh, Denise. Um. Yeah, Denise. Mm -hmm. Denise. Okay. Are we showing off? Denise wants to say uh, money, uh, a job to buy a house. And Denise. yes, and this is um, the last part. Remember, I. I said this. No, uh, no. This is. Uh, La lectura la tienen acá también. Este es el que les mandé el sábado eh, pasado. Y luego para este, ya les mandé para estas clases, les mandé otra que ya sería la que estaríamos utilizando a partir del día de mañana. Eh, mañana. Yes. Tenemos clases. So, um, vamos a compartir. Ya les mandé la del uh, class handout free. Ese es el que mandé antesito de la clase. Dice class handout free. Ahí lo van a encontrar en el grupo de WhatsApp. Aquí ya estaríamos iniciando la sección 3. Y este es el documento. So it says how much is it? Empezando la sección número 3, el tema es how much is it? Um, vamos a estar hablando sobre, bueno, primero, vocabulario de colores. So I most certainly sure you know all this vocabulary. Uh, according to this, the colors have a meaning in English. Uh, According to the United States, meaning black is sad. The color black is meaning is sad, brown, friendly, purple, mysterious, pink, loving, red, exciting, orange, fun, yellow, happy, green, jealous, blue, fruitful, white, pure, gray, boring. Is there any question about the vocabulary here? Maybe the adjectives to just describing the colors? No questions? Green, yeah. And green, jealous. Yeah. Jealous, ajá, uh -huh, es celoso. Celoso o celosa. Jealous. Hello, yellow. Mm -hmm. 
en los blue food en blue uh, blue truthful es confiable truthful confiable truthful confiable ok uh -huh. Any other question? Gray, aburrido. Yeah, gray as boring, aburrido. No, uh, okay. Gray, boring, aburrido. Y brown, en brown, eh, pretty. Friendly. friendly. Friendly, ajá, uh -huh. friendly, yes, correct, amigable, as Glenda amigable. said, amigable, uh -huh. friendly, amigable. Sí, amoroso. Okay. Okay, well, and then we have this conversation, the topic says it's really pretty. Let me uh, go to the audio program so that we can listen and practice that conversation. Since the topic is, it's really pretty. So we're going to listen and then we're gonna practice this conversation. Unit three, how much is it? Page 16, Exercise 2, Conversation. It's really pretty. Part A, Listen and Practice. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. How much are these gloves? The gray ones? They're $18. Oh, that's not bad. Do they come in black? No, sorry, just gray. Okay. Um, how much is that scarf? Which one? The blue and orange one? No, the yellow one. Let's see. It's $24.95. It's really pretty. I'll take it. Questions? Una vez más. Unit 3. How much is it? Page 16, Exercise 2, Conversation. It's really pretty. Part A. Listen and practice. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. How much are these gloves? The gray ones? They're $18. Oh, that's not bad. Do they come in black? No, sorry, just gray. Okay. Um, how much is that scarf? Which one? The blue and orange one? No, the yellow one. Let's see. It's $24.95. It's really pretty. I'll take it. All right, there is the conversation. Do you have any questions? As there are no questions, I'm going to uh, play it again. Voy a poner una vez más. Y voy a ir haciendo stop. Voy a ir uh, después de cada eh, oración que ven ahí para que ustedes puedan repetir en casa. Lo haremos siempre con los micrófonos off. Y luego tomaremos tiempo para eh, practicar aquí en la sección principal. Unit 3. How much is it? Page 16, Exercise 2, Conversation. It's really pretty. Part A. Listen and practice. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. How much are these gloves? The gray ones? They're $18.
colors. Oh, that's not bad. Do they come in black? No, sorry, just gray. Okay. Um, how much is that scarf? Which one? The blue and orange one? No, the yellow one. Let's see. It's twenty four ninety five. It's really pretty. I'll take it. Well, that's it. Uh, volunteer. I need two volunteers to role play this conversation. Me, teacher. Okay, Pedro, you're the sales clerk and the customer. Volunteer for the customer. Me. Glenda. Thank you, Glenda. Okay, you can start, Pedro. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. How much are these the gloves? <laughs> the gray ones? They're $18. Oh, that's not bad. Do they come in black? No, sorry, just they. Okay. Um, oh, how much is that? Uh -huh. Which one? The blue and orange one. No, the yellow one. Let's see, it's a uh, twenty-four ninety-five. It's pretty pretty. Uh, thank you. Excellent, very well done. So um, now let us change. You start, Linda. Okay, yo comienzo hoy. Yes. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. How much are these gloves? The gray one, they are okay. They are 18. 18, perdón. Oh, that's not bad. Do they come in black? No. Sorry, just gray. Oh, mm, how much is that scar? Which one? The blue and orange one? No, the yellow one. Let's see if the uh, 24 miles. It's really pretty and kids. Okay, very good. It's really pretty. I'll take it. I'll take it. So very well done. So this is um the introduction for tomorrow's topic. Mañana, eh, bueno, esta sería la introducción para el tema de mañana. Eh, vamos a estar practicando demonstratives, los demostrativos, y también eh, practicar eh, dando precio, regateando un poquito, etc. So, thank you so much for joining today's session. I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. See you all. Good afternoon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.